Hey guys, welcome back to my Jurassic Park Raptor Comics series. This is episode 4 of 10, so if you still haven't seen parts 1 through 3, I'll have them ready in a playlist on the channel for your convenience to catch up. Now, we last left the Raptors after Raphael had completed their training and released them into the jungle to kill Alan and Ellie's rescuers, and now we begin our next chapter with an attempted escape from the two doctors. At dusk, Grant and Sattler scale the side of the wall they are being kept behind and begin their flight into the jungle. The guards had expected the scientists to give up on hopes of escape and gotten careless, or so the bone diggers thought. Fearing that Raphael would set loose new raptors that the pair runs deeper into the jungle, only to hear an all too familiar sound. The couple grabs hold of a few vines and immediately begins to climb a tree, and underfoot, the first raptor comes into their view. They wait patiently in the still of the night, making sure not to make a single sound. It's still no match for the instincts and intelligence of the Velociraptor. The raptor calls its pack member and begins snapping at the pair as they climb higher. At this point, we are introduced to the name given to this first raptor, Betty, who yanks the vines in the tree's branches, forcing Alan from his hiding spot. Once Grant hits the jungle floor, he dodges the formidable claws of his assailant with the teeth of the dinosaur inches from his face. Then Raphael demands the animal to stop. These animals are under his control now as he demonstrates proudly to the doctors, luckily for them. He explains how stupid it was of them to attempt an escape and asks Ellie what name they may have given his other raptor. Sattler begrudgingly reveals that they named the other Alpha, or Alf for short, seeing as the raptor was born a male, and the injured one in the clinic is named Celia. After taking the pair back to their lodging, Raphael asks for a report on the health of Celia to be given by Dawn so that she can begin her own training and join his other raptors. Ellie begins to show signs of breaking under pressure and is only calmed by Ellen's calm demeanor and persistence in finding a way to get out of the situation. In the corner of their current room, Celia views the scientists comforting one another and is noticed by Dr. Sattler. She exclaims this animal will need them now more than ever once its torture begins tomorrow. Ellie again shows signs of despair as she laments the terrible stakes they've been in ever since they went to Jurassic Park, and how the two are deserted with no friends to help them in their imprisonment. Meanwhile, the guard watching the doctors on the video system exclaims that they could all be her friends here, Blondie, making a clear sexual implication in front of his employer. He asks his boss why not, saying they're cut off here in the jungle and have all the drugs they'd need to get her in the mood. This angers Raphael, who pulls his gun on the guard he's employed and pulls the trigger on the man after making the cruel request. Some things Raphael even finds despicable. He orders his other men to take out the trash and feed him to his raptors. They deserve a reward for hunting down Grant and Sattler. Meanwhile, back in Panama Cinecom, Dr. Ian Malcolm demands an update on the whereabouts of his friends. The soldier gives him the rundown that they're more than likely with the raptors somewhere in the Colombian jungle where the troops have lost contact. Other than that, their intelligence is limited to none. Malcolm exclaims that chaos theory is already in action and that he's going down there himself. The soldier remarks that Ian's been in the hospital for weeks and that he's barely able to walk, telling him that he's not going anywhere, when suddenly a familiar voice shouts his accompaniment with Malcolm on his journey. They should all be destroyed. Malcolm is shocked, as am I, to see Robert Muldoon himself standing inside the doorway, thinking he was dead. Muldoon's response, hell, the raptors tried, but I'd raised them. I knew their hunting tricks. Gather your things, doctor. We have people to rescue. On a side note, I find this reveal incredibly out of left field, and while it is rather cool to see Muldoon back in a Jurassic story, how the hell did he survive? Shouldn't he be like, hey man, uh, not enough, not enough room on that helicopter or what? You fucking left me. Anyway, back in the jungle, Celia is reintroduced to her other siblings and training is getting ready to begin. Raphael orders the animals to attack their scarecrows as usual, with the only one neglecting to do so being the new raptor. Raphael orders her one more time and in a pretty unsettling panel, showing the raptor to already anticipate what's coming next, Raphael electrocutes the raptor and forces it into submission. Curiously, this raptor attacks a scarecrow but misses its head and instead goes for the arm of its prey. This angers Raphael, who needs his animals to be killers, and insists this creature is playing tricks on him. He says it's finally time to use his animals for what they were trained for, and puts Celia away while prepping Alf and Betty for tomorrow. At the edge of the jungle the next day, a large truck parks out in front of a government building, where three judges come out to a gathering of reporters. They announce that they are issuing indictments on Raphael Santos for the deaths of the mayor and chief of police in the city, as well as the deaths of five other policemen, 14 federal soldiers, and one American drug agent, along with 92 counts of racketeering. Raphael has been pretty busy. The reporter asks the judges if they are in fear of any reprisals, to which the judge rebuttals, let him do his worst. Immediately, several armed men file out of the van, firing in the air and releasing the raptors to attack the men making the public statement. The raptors kill one man instantly, while another is able to get in a single shot and graze the raptor's thigh, before being cut across the belly himself. A nervous cop screams for pedestrians to get out of the line of fire before firing his gun at the dinosaur, only to miss and hit the window of a car driving by. The car swerves and brings itself into a power line, causing electrical lines to surge all around the chaos-ridden town, all while Raphael laughs triumphantly in his public display. 
display of power. The surge lines produce intense electrical voltage that fills the raptors with great fear and also disables the collars around their necks. The raptors take their leave and Raphael shouts at them demanding them to stop. He tells his comrade to zap them, but the man cries out that it's not working anymore. Raphael races after his raptors who make their way back to their Columbian prison. The dinosaurs viciously attack the guards surrounding the building and begin to strike at the steel doors containing their other pack member, who graciously joins them. Alan and Ellie come into view of the raptors just before they too are killed, while Celia orders the others to back down from the paleontologists. It seems the raptors can indeed remember a kindness. Pulling into his base of operations, Raphael gets out of his vehicle and demands the raptors to stop. When they show their lack of obedience, Raphael delivers shock via their collars that begin working again now back home, only to have the animals bolder and more vengeful now than ever before. The animals ignore their pain and descend onto Raphael like any other prey. As expected, Raphael didn't seem to hold on to his power for as long as he'd hoped, and now the raptors are free from any sort of containment. Alan and Ellie appear to be free to go, but the biggest thing I'm taking away from this issue is the return of Robert Muldoon. As insane and unbelievable as his appearance was, I'm hoping they put him to good use in the following stories, as he was always one of my favorite characters from the film, and actually did survive Jurassic Park in Michael Crichton's original novel. The next issue should be up as soon as I get done editing it, and I'm hoping you all will continue to enjoy these, as they are pretty interesting and definitely not as well known as any of the other stories seen on film. I hope you all enjoyed today's content, and if you feel like I deserved it, I'd appreciate a like, and hope you consider subscribing if you haven't already to keep up to date with my latest content. I'll see all you guys in the next video, and as always, take it easy.